we come into your presence. Your presence, Lord. We wait on you. Speak to our hearts, our minds, and our spirits as we endeavor to be led by you. To see as you see, Father. To see as you see. Yes, Lord. Our desire is to see as you see. Dwell with us. Your way, Lord. Let your presence saturate us as never before. Hey, we wait on you, Lord. We invite you. We wait on you this day. In no other name than the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. What a day! What a day the Lord has made! What a day the Lord! Sunday morning sermon. Yes, Lord. Let me say a wonderful greeting.
greetings, a good morning to you all. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that God is with us. I know that God is with us. This text that was read this morning from Exodus chapter 33 was revealed to our sister Colette during this week and I'm going to read from verse 12 before we even touch on the sermon. Then Moses said to the Lord, this is from verse 12. See, you say to me, bring this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, Show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence do not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Yes, I see someone that got theirs on the audio. Yeah. If your presence do not go with us, do not bring us up. From the importance of his presence. Moses wanted to make sure that the Lord was with him. And as the prayers went forth, the repetition of the lines and the Lord, you are with us was repeated constantly. And so I bring to you today, being at the right place at the right time. Being at the right place at the right time. Very often we hear he or she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And it reads or it conjures up a feeling of negativity that something has gone wrong. And we hear it parents say to their youngsters, be careful. Be careful where you're walking. Be careful of friends. Because they don't want them to fall in the wrong place or go into the wrong things. And so there's a warning that goes on that they're to be at the right place. Even if those of you watch TV, we hear from Judge Judy or Judge Rinder. You were at the right, wrong place at the wrong time. And if we read the book of Proverbs and Solomon, gives us wisdom about being at the right time, at the right place. And it's important in our Christian life that we be at the right place at the right time. We hear the 
journalists today, those who are paid lots of money and they paid for an exclusive, exclusive story, how did they get the story? Being at the right place at the right time. The job promotion. People wonder, how did you get the job promotion? Being at the right place at the right time. The officer or the doctor, the nurse that's off duty. And something happens within the community. And they're there to offer aid to whether it be a victim or someone who's fallen ill. They would use the phrase, I was there at the right time and the right place. <coughs> And sometimes we feel that this is just a coincidence. Even in Christendom, we take things to be just a coincidence. But Romans 8, verse 28 states that all things, that, that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. And so for the Christian, we focus not on the coincidence, but on the plan and the purpose of God. Our focus is on the plan and the purpose of God. And so being in the right place at the right time, means that we have to be in his presence. Which is what Moses cried to the Lord for. He said that, Lord, we need your presence. We cannot go without your presence. But also, even as I was reading Romans chapter 8, verse 28, very often when even things are not going in accordance with how we would like it, we would put it down to the things of God. But you know, sometimes there are times when we would go off in ourselves and we would do things because we want to, for my own benefit. And when the consequences are not what we would like, we would say, God, God, God. But the thing about it is, Romans, in Romans said, it actually says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And so the stipulation there for those who love God is that they are chosen and they are called by God and they have a heart to serve the Lord in all their ways. We know that as we walk, all things can work together for those that love the Lord. Matthew Henry states that every providential is tend to be a spiritual good, tend to the spiritual good to those who love God. Those who love God, God's provision will be there for them beyond more than we can even comprehend. But also, it means that there is a weaning from the world making us fit for heaven. Being in the right place at the right time. Ecclesiastic chapter nine depicts where Solomon seemed a bit perturbed when he looked at the life of men around him. And he says, I returned and saw under the sun, life in general, that the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to the men of understanding, nor yet favour of men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. 
Solomon recognized that there was a time and a season. Another translator states, I've observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner does not always win the race. And the strongest warrior does not always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. And the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated does not always lead successful life. Solomon said it's decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. So Solomon had time to sit and to think. So what is it saying? It said that our lives might not go according to how we plan, but God will be with us. Our lives might not work out to what we expect, but God is with us. You see, when we're in our 20s, it's almost like the world is the horizon and we can do anything and so on and so on. But as you get on to the mature years, life teaches you wisdom and it teaches you a bit more understanding and so forth. And even as life teaches us those wisdom, some of us tend to worry about whether it's because I'm in the wrong place that this is happening, whether it's because it's the wrong timing and so on. But let me assure you, you can be in the right place and you can be in the right time. Timing is everything. We look at the clock and the time is going. And time refers to the chronological. One, two, three, right? And it also um, talks about the quality, the purpose of time. So as we look at the time, we look at how it is spent in the purposes of God. Very often, we think that God is not interested in our time and our place. And we leave his presence or we leave the house and we go out and we think that God is not with us. But he is saying that his presence wants to be with us in every area of our life. So whether we are at work, whether we are at home, whether we are part of the shut-in, his presence is there, but take it a step further, is asking us to open ourselves to others so that we can show him his presence. Yes, we are not saved by works, but by the grace of God. And it's not the amount that we do, but it's his grace. His grace. And so we must become conscious of the time and the place. As we sit in his presence, what state of mind did we come into his house with? What state of mind, spirit, did we come into his house with? There's a Greek word called kora, which means to happen. When we come into God's presence with his spirit, in the, having the right mind, things will happen. The word chorus is even, and it's translated being in the right place at the right time. But it takes it a step further. God's appointment. So as we live, are we living as ambassadors to 
fulfill God's appointment. As we know, we are vessels of honor because the Bible tells us that he has chosen us and he has poured in his spirit within us to live within us, to dwell with us, to direct and so forth. And so we become the vessels of honor, important vessels carrying the anointing of God. Overwhelmed with the spirit of God. Yes. Saturated with the mind of God. And so as we move forward, we know that we will be in the right place at the right time. There are times when we even come into this house and we sit and we say, should I have been here? Was it worth me going into the presence of the Lord? Because our minds are all over the place. That's not God's doing. Because the whole point of coming into his house is to come into his presence. Come closer into his presence. Because as we live throughout the week, we endeavor to live in his presence. But when we come together as a collective, and we move from the outer courts into the inner courts in his presence. Then we will begin to see the mind of God. The things that he has for us. And things will begin to happen. God is interested in us. Place, location, all to do with our station in life. Today, we are being drawn by the Holy Spirit to pinpoint the relationship we have with God. Our position in God, being in the right time, right place, at the right time. Where do we stand in our relationship with God? Are we in the right place? Is our standing good with him? Can he call us righteous? Can he call us holy? Being in the right place at the right time. In Luke chapter 2, we see Zachariah and his wife, an elderly couple who didn't have any children. Zachariah was a priest. And he was in the temple. He was at the right time, right place at the right time. But even though he was in the temple and he constantly went to the temple, he, there was an issue in their lives. And I dare say, their prayer was a prayer that constantly went before the Lord. But on this particular day, Zachariah went into the presence of the Lord and there he was met by an angel. And the angel said something to him. It was a Korah time. A time when God was going to move. A time when God was going to answer the prayer. The day had come. The angel said to him, that his wife Elizabeth would expect a son. And poor Zachariah, even though he had been praying, and the angel told him that this prayer was going to be answered, doubt came in. We've just sung the song. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. In front of all our unbelief. Zachariah didn't believe. The angel even told him that the son was going to be called, that he said the son would be called John. And because of the unbelief, Zachariah's lips were zipped. He was made dumb. 
because of the unbelief. God is saying to us that he is going to move amongst us and he is going to do things in our lives. If we go into his presence and he is speaking to us, believe him and take him at his word. Or else we may see consequences. Zachariah became dumb. And when the child was born, and they named the child John, that was when Zachariah's voice was restored. We don't want the enemy to be sitting on our voices. We don't want the enemy to be sitting on our songs. We raise the hallelujahs in the storms. We raise the hallelujahs in the battles. We raise the hallelujahs in the difficulties. Ah! Because it is in our hallelujahs that the Lord will reign. It is in the hallelujahs that we will see that the battles will come down. It is in the hallelujahs that we will see the storm shift. It is in the songs that we sing that we will see that we will be restored. So continue to raise the hallelujah. But we can only raise the hallelujah when we are in at the right place and the right time. And so as we go into the presence of the Lord, we push from the outer courts to the inner courts where we stand in the throne room of God and we begin to talk to Father God and we begin to pull down the strongholds and we begin to tear down the things that are affecting our lives. But there are things that need to be done for this to happen. Samuel, when he heard the voice of the Lord, was at the right place at the right time. David, when he heard the voice of the Lord, was at the right place at the right time. Abraham's servant who had to go and look, look for a son, look for a wife, for Abraham's son had to go to the right place at the right time. This is in Genesis 24. So in everything that we do, we need to be at the right place at the right time. So God wants things to happen. Core. But he's saying, come, 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 come. In Leviticus, we read Leviticus chapter 16 that when Moses' successor, sorry, Moses' brother. Aaron was to be anointed. There were certain things that had to be done. Prior to this chapter, we read how Aaron's son had gone into the temple and offered things that were not appropriate to God. Things that God could not receive. And I like it today to our condition that when we come into the presence of God, and there are times when our minds are drawn elsewhere because of the things that we have committed and the things that we have done, and yet we are saying, Lord, move amongst us. But in this passage in Leviticus, we find 
that Aaron's son died. Because they came into the presence of the Lord unworthily. They did something that God could not approve of. Yes, we live under grace. But let me say that whatever we do, there are consequences. And furthermore, we are told that there is a book that is kept on every and every individual's life. I keep a journal. If it was a diary, I'd probably write everything in there. But because it's a journal, I don't write everything in there. But if we were, if we had to write down everything we did from the time we woke up this morning, right down to what we said, right down to what we thought, do you we not understand that all these are in the book? Do we not understand that the enemy has a way of stopping our blessings because of what is written in this book? In fact, put it like this. He stands in front of Father God, judge, our judge, our priest. And when we go to make our, make our requests, the book is open. And the enemy said, mm -mm. Father, you can't answer that because this is what she did. This is what was done. For the Bible states that if I regard sin or iniquity in my life, the Lord will not hear me. And so for him to work, there is a clearing out that needs to take place. So we can be there at the right time, but our hearts are not at the right place. Here we find in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 3. Then Aaron shall come, sorry, thus Aaron shall come unto the holy place with the blood of the young bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering. Now, in the Old Testament, there were offerings that were made for sin, the sin of the individual, and there were offerings that were made for the sins of the community, and also there were burnt offerings for forgiveness and thanks, thankfulness. Many, many offerings would go forth, but here today, we don't have to make the sacrifice anymore because Jesus became the sacrifice for our sins. So we have no excuse for being in the right place at the right time. Aaron had to come into the presence of the Lord. But then there was a particular order in which he had to come. Aaron had to come in a certain way. Verse 3 says, this is how Aaron is to enter. This is according to the NIV version. He must first bring a young bull for his sin offering and a ram for his burnt offering. He is to put on the sacred linen tunic with linen undergarments next to his body. He is to tie the linen sash round him and put it on the turban. Put on the linen turban. These are the sacred garments so he must bathe himself with water before he puts them on. I had to smile because I came across the MSG version, the messenger. After the death of Aaron's two sons, they died when they came before the Lord God with a strange fire. God spoke to Moses, tell your brother Aaron not to enter the holies of holies, barging inside the curtains that's before the atonement cover on the chest whenever he feels like it. 
lest he die, because I am present in the cloud over the atonement cover. Not to barge in any and any hour, but there was a way of presenting ourselves, himself. Aaron had to present himself, we too have to present himself. So we have the blood sacrifice, but he went further, he said, to put on the holy linen tunic and linen underwear and tie the sash around him and put on the linen turban. Sacred garments. Sacred garments enveloped in the garments of praise. Sacred garments enveloped in the garments of righteousness. Sacred garments enveloped in our relationship with God. And it is when we are wearing these garments that has been provided through the blood of Jesus Christ that we will be able to say that we are in the right place at the right time. But before all that could be done, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron that he had to wash himself. To cleanse himself. There is no way that I would go out to do a bit of gardening and have mud on me, and then go to put on a wedding outfit, something for the wedding. I would have to go and have a shower, and do what I, what's needed to be done, and then get dressed. What am I saying? To wear the garments of praise and the garment of righteousness, and to come before the holies of holies, we must be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We must be clean. For God to work amongst us, we must make our minds up to be clean. We must say, Lord, here am I. I want to be that clean vessel. Wash me. That mysterious washing that takes place through the blood of the Lamb. Lord, do it. So now that I can offer the praises so that I can be righteous, so that I can be holy. Yes, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But do not use that as a scapegoat. Too long the enemy would have us to say, I'm not perfect. And so we belittle the power of God. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Too long we have said that I cannot do it. It's only because of God. But here the Lord is saying to come. We say that we want to see from the face of Jesus. And so it means that we move from this position to another position. And so as we accept the cleansing through the blood of Jesus and we say, Lord, here I am, a vessel of honor. Lord, I want to dwell in your presence. I'm coming up, Lord. In your presence. So that I can have a core moment. I can have a moment where you can work in my life. I can have a moment where you will be glorified. I can walk through the streets of Dolby, we'll run to the wherever we're from, and you will be glorified. Why? Because your presence is with me. Like Moses, I say, we cannot go without your presence, Lord. We need you, Father God. Where shall we go without your presence? If I make my bed down below, I cannot pick you up. You were there. If I make my take the flight, take the wings of the morning, you are there. We cannot hide from him. We cannot hide from him. And so because he knows us, individually,
continually. He deals with us because he needs us to come closer. So he wants us to come into his presence. So to be clothed, we need to walk in his righteousness. Isaiah 61 tells us, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. This is what he has done. Clothed us with salvation and covered us. The so psalm says, with thankfulness, my heart is open with, with gratefulness. We lift our hands to him. Why? Because we are covered with a robe of righteousness. We cannot come into his presence without accepting Jesus Christ. We cannot come into his presence without accepting that he died for us. Why? Because that would mean his death meant nothing. So we accept Jesus, his death, as the way to the Father. We hope, open our hearts to him. And we say, Jesus, I accept you. For it is through you I have salvation. And that my life can be made righteous. The Bible states that as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Today, as we have listened, being in the right place at the right time means that we must dwell in his presence. Being at the right place at the right time means we can sing the songs of Zion truthfully. Sing the songs of Zion with glory in our hearts, not in heaviness. Being at the right place at the right time means that wherever we are, we are able to stand and to endure whatever we are going through. Why? Because he is with us. And so today, I say to you, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Wait in his presence. Sit in his presence and allow him to download that which he needs to do for your day. For your day to be a core day, a successful day, a day of happenings, it means taking time out, sitting in his presence, and making sure it's quality time. Not the time where, oh, I've read this morning, let me rush and go. Yes, it happens, but discipline ourselves. To spend time in his presence so that he can accomplish that which he wants to do. For those of us who have not yet accepted Christ, you don't have to go through your journey on your own. Open your hearts to him. Open your hearts to him and allow him to glorify himself in you. 
And as he glorifies himself in you, as he makes the way clear for you, others will become attracted to your life. Others will see the glory of his presence in your life. Others will begin to ask, how is it that? How is it that? All because of his glory. All because of his grace. All because he wants to do a new thing in our lives. The core moment. Not coincidence. Not by chance. But happenings that we know for surety it was God. Let's bow our heads. Thank you.